So I'm here with Phil, <laughs> David, and David. Thank you for being with us. I want to talk about your movie, Pincus. So let's start with David, please. Uh, we're here. Uh, we're here last night, watching the uh, the premiere. How did it feel, being here at the LA Fest and having everyone look at your movie? Oh, it felt felt great. Uh, Love the Los Angeles Film Festival. They've been been big supporters of my work and of David's work, David Nordstrom's work. And uh, yeah, it's like being it's like family. And uh, yeah, the premiere couldn't have been couldn't have been better. Yeah, a lot of people there I saw, mm-hmm. and you know they were very supportive. Talked to a few people afterwards. As a matter of fact, talked to uh, you and David afterwards. Mm-hmm. Everyone seemed to really uh, like the movie. You had talked about having ten different endings, mm. and then finally choosing the cave ending. Can you give us a hint into some of the other endings that were uh, up and running for the movie? Sure. I don't think I don't think there was ten different endings, um, but. Um there were several. It ended on top of that ramp at one point. It's probably not very interesting for people who haven't seen the movie, the ramp ending <laughs> versus the cave ending. But, um, but yeah, it, it ended on at, at the National Park at Shark Valley in, in one version. Um, I think that's where it, in the script it ends. Right. But, and you had mentioned that a friend of yours had suggested that. Mm-hmm. Did that just germinate after, you know, after a while? And you just thought, well, let me go back to the cave ending. I should have done three people at the same time, and they all three said, oh, it would be really cool if it ended in the cave. Um, And I didn't think that was a very good idea for a while. But then it, yeah, it just sort of seeped in, and and then I tried it. And, yeah, it felt right. Now now let me ask you about the title, Pincus. Mm -hmm. Was that a nickname growing up? Was that a friend's name? It's a... It's curious that his, his name is Pincus. Mm-hmm. It was kind of my dad's nickname. Some of his friends used to call him that. So, <laughs> there's not a great. They call him Pincus. Wasn't his real name? It was his, like, on his birth certificate or something, no? No. It might have been his, like, Yiddish version of his yeah, name yeah. or something. Yeah. But I just kind of, I don't know. I liked how it sounded. And it means or, the oracle, I think. Or, yeah, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> but I don't think the character of Pincus is really an oracle in the movie. Everybody else is kind of an oracle, and he's he's the opposite. Yeah. But, yeah. He's wearing the red shoes all along. <clears throat> Actually, the ending I hadn't seen the ending uh, until last night because I'd seen earlier versions, uh, and the, the ending reminded me. It was like, do you see Melancholia? Lars von Trier's Melancholia. Yeah. It, was, it was, but it was like a gentler. Melancholia, and it was actually more melancholia than melancholia, because melancholia was so seems like such like a kind of like soft term for like such a horrific movie. So, yeah. well, 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 David, let me ask you. Yeah, uh, you you were keep talking doing. about. Yeah, please, thank keep you, David. Keep <laughs> David. <laughs> uh, getting ready for the role, you you had mentioned last night that you had met David's father a few times. Mm-hmm. So, how did it feel? I, you know, getting into character, now him portraying your father. Mm-hmm. How was getting into that role, getting into that uh, situation? It was good. You know, Paul is, is such a, a sweet guy and a funny guy. <clears throat> and at the same time, he's, um, he, you know, given his situation with the Parkinson's, as advanced as it is, and putting up with different caretakers coming in, and then the son who's going to make a movie about it. And it's us. He's a very resigned man, too, and I think that's where a lot of the humor, humor comes from, but he didn't, you know, um, really... He doesn't take a lot of shit, really, you know? Um, and it was kind of strange to go in and, and be put in this role where I was, you know, playing a family member who was telling him what to do, and... And I think he would push back, you know, in a very realistic way against me as this actor coming in and, you know, being in these scenes with him. And at a certain point, you know, like a real frustration would would grow with him out of me saying, like, listen, man, like, we got to do this take. Like, you gotta, <laughs> we can't keep going off the script, which also just helped the performance, I think, because that's, in a way, it kind of reflects, I'm sure, like a lot of the, the, the friction you had with him when you're trying to you know, basically collaborate with the, you know, your dad and 
fight the illness and get get a certain job done and and it's just not working out there's all kinds of little road bumps and and you know personal foibles that get in the way so there's kind of like a weird I don't know reflection in that the actor relationship that we had with you know I'm sure that Dave had as a as his caretaker right when you were mentioning how you went off script a little bit so a lot of his Responses, like especially when he was talking about death, and he says, "You know, I don't know what, you know, what's beyond, you know, beyond life." Was that in the script? Was it basically that's where you were heading, or did that just come off in between the conversation between you two? Well, that was you want to talk about that because that's actually some of the documentary footage that was the genesis of the the project. Yeah, that particular scene is. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, that was recorded. That wasn't just an interview I did with my dad, and I turned the camera around and shot it later. You know, a year later, to look like David was the one who was who was speaking with him. So, that, in a way, that was in the script because it was footage that we already had. Um, but I can't remember if I wrote which section. You know, I, I wrote kind of sections of the documentary footage into the script, but I don't know if it was that exact section or if I kind of used a different part, because we had hours and hours of interviews and it probably said, like, Paul ruminates on <laughs> the meaning of life or something, you know, and whatever. Right. Picked some footage that felt right for that. Yeah. Did, did you have that scene in mind the entire time you were making the movie? Because it, 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 that seems to fit perfect, you know, with the whole afterlife and the whole uh, you know dealing with his disease mm. it seemed to fit perfect did you have that scene in mind or did it just kind of work itself in there as the movie went along yeah that happened really late in the editing to having my dad kind of do the voice over to that scene where they go to the to the wildlife park so yeah, yeah. it's also hard to remember what came in what order but um but yeah i think a lot of that was kind of figured out in yeah. the editing you, know, you were saying that the editing, you seem to enjoy it. You were able to take pieces here and there and make a whole different movie. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that enjoyable. It was kind of uh, a <laughs> long, <laughs> grueling process, but it was nice to have have a lot of freedom with the material. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, Phil, uh, last night you had mentioned that uh, you'd known David since elementary school. Yeah, so our great. parents were on the, our moms were on PTA together. So just, during a time of crisis for the Coconut Grove Elementary PTA. Oh, no. Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> what was it soccer balls or, or basketballs? Uh, or getting the air conditioning system online was really tough, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it was their big accomplishment. Was it? Yeah, yeah. No oh, no. Very hot, yeah. Not suitable for uh, educational purposes. Not right? for, not for, <laughs> our, not for these two boys. <laughs> <laughs> We're too... That's wonderful. Yeah. That's great. Great memory. You, you had mentioned that you had uh, seen David's stuff prior, and you really liked it. What, what drew you to I this? I genuinely thing? liked it. Yeah, like I didn't even, I had no social obligation to like it, really. Um, but I was really moved by his thesis film, Trona, that David Nordstrom also stars in. And um, I just thought it was excellent. And it was such a relief when that happens, because you don't have to lie to somebody. <laughs> um, and uh, it just, it was, these guys were working in a mode that I had never experienced before, and um, I was really jealous. And so ever since then, I've conspired to find ways to insert myself into the process. And I have finally succeeded. <laughs> <laughs> so, so who approached who for this film? Did you approach uh, Phil? or? Yeah. Yeah, I wanted someone whose opinion I trusted to to shoot me straight on whether things were working or not. And Phil's great with crafting story and uh, structuring films and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, he, he uh, I, I, I mean, right? I think I just asked him to help me write it and to be part of the process. And we should give a shout out to my uh, deceased friend who. Uh, my, my grandmother long since passed away, maybe maybe almost 20 years. But, um, uh, but I inherited a little bit of money from her, and, I, and she was a sculptor and an artist, and, uh, and I sort of wasn't sure what to do with it, and I felt like it needed to go to 
um, art making in some way. And I thought about maybe like buying a painting or something. And then we had started to talk and the, pretty quickly I, uh, the idea popped into my head that I should do that and possibly alter our relationship. Um, but uh, but I, I just wanted this thing to exist. Nice. You know, just a few more questions. I did want to ask you about Dietrich. Demar. Demar, sorry. Demar, yes. Tell me a little bit about him. I know I found out from David that uh, he had passed away mm -hmm. uh, just last year. But how was it when you spoke to him? Because you, you saw him on the construction site first, right? Mm -hmm. You found him in that room reading all those books. What kind of impact did he have on you? Obviously a big one since you put him in the movie. Personally, what kind of impact did he have? Yeah, he was one of one of my favorite people to have a beer with in Miami. He was really fun to be around, and he, he, I'd never met anyone who had a lifestyle anything like his. I mean, he he didn't. He was a real drifter. I mean, he didn't have many possessions. He didn't really have a permanent place to live, um, but he always. I mean, he had his demons, like everybody does, but he he always seemed genuinely content and, and happy and, and okay with what was going on in his life. And it was a life that a lot of people would look at and say, like, that guy really must have screwed up or that I would never want to live like that. So it was kind of an amazing lesson and uh, just how you look at the world and, yeah. and, and that there are many different ways to carry yourself through the, wow. the world. So oh, he was always inspiring, yeah. Amazing. And, and, and David, working with him, I mean, you had a chance to you know, deal with him professionally. Did you have moments to talk with him privately, you know, talk about the books that he's read? And oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, lots of, lots of conversations. Um, he's also, we, I'm a Green Bay Packer fan. He was a Green Bay Packer fan. We bonded over that. He was a little bit sore one day that Dave wanted to shoot a scene and we couldn't go watch one of the playoff games in his favorite <laughs> Miami bar, Ted's Hideaway. Um, which was funny. It was the only time I ever saw anything approaching <laughs> anger in the man. <laughs> uh, but he was, yeah, we had a lot of time uh, between takes as Dave would be setting up shots and kind of um, figuring things out where we just kind of talk, which was really nice because that just bled over very nicely into the, the scenes we actually performed in together. Uh -huh. Fantastic. Uh, just one last question. So uh, what do you have coming next? Are you doing another project together? Are you doing individual projects? Well, we might make this mad scientist movie in Marfa um, coming up. Um, you're working on, what are you working on? Wild mushroom hunting documentary. Oh yeah, the wild mushroom hunting documentary. And Phil, uh, I'm working on uh, a Lego movie about the toys, an adaptation of a toy. <laughs> so the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, very nice. Well, I look forward to seeing that one, too. Let me see the screening. Hey, guys, thank you very much. Thanks Appreciate very much. Appreciate it. You bet. Thank you. Right, thank you.